Hello, I'm Doug Flynn. Welcome to Kentucky Life. Our show tonight is about some of the people and places making life better for others. Our first story takes us to Jenkins in Letcher County. It's a world apart from Rome where this year Mother Teresa was canonized as Saint Teresa. But some 40 years ago, Mother Teresa came to Jenkins to establish the convent whose work continues today. The benefits that the Mysteries of Charity provide in Eastern Kentucky are what you might call largely intangible benefits. Being known, being loved, being there for somebody, those things are very important. Most Catholic religious have three vows of chastity, poverty, and obedience, as we do. And many congregations have a fourth vow, which differentiates them in some ways. So our fourth vow, try to satiate that thirst for Jesus' love and for souls by wholehearted and free service to the poorest of the poor. We do not accept any payment for any of our services. We don't accept government grants or regular sources of income. We depend completely on divine providence. We help with food distributions and help people in their material needs as much as we are able to. We're not here primarily to answer all their problems. We can't take away all their economic problems. We want them to realize the love of God for them through what we do. The most important thing Mother always told us is, she used to say it like this, one, one, you're with one person at a time. And Mother had that gift. When she was with one person, you really felt like there was no one else in the world. So to be with one person and to, to be fully attentive to them and what they, what they really need. Mother Teresa, so religious life is simply belonging completely to Jesus. And it is a call, it's a grace. Everyone needs grace for the particular life that God calls them to. And none of us will be happy unless we respond to the call that God gives us. Permission was given her in 1950 to begin the Missionaries of Charity. In 1965, we got another permission to, she was no longer under the Archbishop of Calcutta, but under the Holy Father, under the Pope. So that meant we could go anywhere in the world. How we came to Jenkins is really God's work. I think the answer is the Holy Spirit, but he works through people. Someone had told Mother, she was in the United States, that there was a great need for the sisters in Appalachia so she mentioned this to Archbishop Hickey in Washington when we opened a house there, and he spoke to Bishop Hughes in Covington, who immediately invited Mother. She was captivated by Jenkins. She wanted to come here. The house opened officially on April 30th, 1982, and uh, there were four sisters to begin with, two from India, one from Singapore, and one from the United States, Pennsylvania. We opened with a convent here, and we began, as we always do, we began visiting to see what are the real needs in the neighborhood. And it had been a mining town, and it wasn't anymore, and there were a lot of people without work, a lot of old people left alone, a difficult rural poverty, different from the cities. The poverty has been more material. They don't have food, they don't have the means of repairing their houses. It has been more material because here, there hasn't been so much that relational poverty. But old people have been left alone while young people go and try and find work in the cities. So there is that kind of poverty there. And more and more, the young people that remain here are getting into drugs and crime. And so it's the same, it's the same thing, that painful, feeling of being completely unwanted and useless. We don't ever, for instance, if people say, I need help with this, we don't ever just give them the help at the door and let them go away. We visit them and see what the needs are. We're only able to help people that we know, know what the needs actually really, really are. The local residents in Jenkins respond with so much love to the sisters. It's like we're part of a family. They know where to turn to in need. We 
We also turn to them when we, we need something. We look a little strange when we arrive in Kentucky in these clothes, which are straight out of India. But uh, after a while, we're, we're normal for them. <laughs> Mother Teresa said she felt right at home from the beginning. I'm sure she felt that it was so simple, normal, down-to-earth people. And they were very kind. She loved their smiles. They were very welcoming. I think the residents of Jenkins, Kentucky, took to, to Mother right away as well, like a duck to water. They didn't know her, obviously, when she, when she came, but they just took her to their hearts right away. Anyone that met her or knew her would describe her in terms of light. She was full of love. She was aware of everybody in the room. She would always go to the, she would always find if she was in a group of people, she would always find the person most in need. People who met her just for one minute, maybe shook hands with her. They would very truthfully afterwards say, I'm a friend of Mother Teresa's. When Mother was given prizes, like the Nobel Prize or anything, she always said, this is for the poor. And she would be the first to say, this is in recognition for the poor. This, uh, it is meant to help us realize that the poor are important. And she would also say, holiness is nothing but a simple duty for you and for me. Each one of us is called to be holy. And her love and her eyes always on Jesus, showing us it's possible for each one of us. Maybe we won't be canonized in Rome, but we, each one of us is called to be a saint. Each one of us is called to be eternally with God. That's what he created us for. Mother Teresa was canonized on September 4th, 2016. And so now we can legitimately call her Saint Teresa of Calcutta, which many people did while she was still alive. <laughs>